Welcome to Two Cents FC. I'm your host, Amobi Kugo, back again with my guy, L. Each week, we'll be talking with individuals from around the soccer world, learning about their stories and getting their unfiltered thoughts and opinions. This week, we're joined by NorCal Connect, Stumptown AC goalkeeper, Kevin Gonzalez. We'll be getting to know all about Kevin and his soccer journey. And Kevin, how are you doing today? I'm doing well, man. I'm just chilling, excited. I've been waiting for this all week. <laughs> Respect. <so. laughs> I really have. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a pleasure to have you on. Um, you know, you said you was born in Oakland, raised in Hayward. I was born in Hayward, raised in Sac. L was born in Hayward. Born in, through in, no, I was born in San Francisco. Oh, okay. So we raised Francisco. all over the Bay, essentially. <laughs> I lived, I lived, no, that's, that's lived everywhere. Water. Same waters, but it's all right. Okay. <laughs> City boy. Uh, respect so first thing we do is two truths and a cap so i know l's gonna run down the rules but just just see how we how well we get to know you and then start from there yeah right, for cool. sure so um like a movie said we have a nice little icebreaker game here called two truths and a cap essentially you'll tell us three facts about yourself two will be true one will be a lie and a Moby and i have to guess what the lie is so Cool. What's the score? What's, what's the we're score not even right keeping. We're not even keeping track anymore. <laughs> oh, is that all right? Cool. Bad, so, yeah, so. Smashing on the movie yeah, right now. It's right, it. cool. It works out. So whenever okay. you're ready, bro. Go ahead. All right. So two truths, one cap. All right. I'm ahead in, diff in different orders. All right. So um, I started playing organized ball at the age of 11. Uh, I attended a San Jose Clash game, and uh, I played on the field until my junior year of high school. Oh, okay. Play, <laughs> He played, he played on the field. Played on the field, field until my junior okay. year of high school. Oh, San, San Jose Clash. Wait, no, because you're like, you can't be that old. When did the Clash change their name? When did it change to the earthquakes? Was it before what? they moved to um to Houston? Oh. No, nah, they were the earthquakes before. before that was in there. That was in there. <laughs> no, that was okay. there. Don't tell. You can't be asking questions to Moby, bro. No, no, I'm not asking Moby. questions. I'm, I'm thinking right. to myself. It's like, yo, because the clash, San Jose Clash, and then they changed it. They renamed to Earthquakes. Then they moved to Dynamo. They came back. So it's like, I, I don't know how old you are. So it's like, ah, uh, that's gonna be the cap for me. No, like 27, cool. right? 28. Yeah, you got it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. no, hold on, hold on. What was the, what was the first? <laughs> so that changed all. <laughs> yeah, that changed everything. Uh, what was the first um thing? I I played uh, organized ball until the, uh, my first time playing organized ball at the age of eleven. Uh, the last one's a cap. The on the field till junior year of high school. Uh, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say organized ball at eleven. The cap. Yeah. yeah. Oh no, 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 my cap. Yeah, that's my cap. My cap was at eleven. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Hey, like, damn. I, I, I played. I played. Yeah. So I played goalie until like. Uh, well, I played field play until like my sophomore summer, then junior year, boom, I was like goalie, goalie full time. It was it was kind of so crazy. Before before then you were like playing goalie like a little bit. Or you yeah, I was like, like I was I was hitting my little I was hitting my little Jorge Campos on every once in a while. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it was it was like a little glimpse of it, like sometimes every once in a while. Um okay. until like my dad checked me one time. Well, it was like a soccer team. My dad pressed me and he was like, Hey, you need to go on the goal right now. We're not gonna win if you don't get on the goal. And so my coach came in and was like, Hey, you gotta be a team player. And I was like, All right, let's do it. And, and just, ever since then. Yeah, yeah we're gonna get off. into that though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Into yeah, yeah that. And the San Jose Clash, I pulled I pulled down my pops. That's probably probably like first game my dad ever took me at Spartan Stadium in San Jose. And yeah. <laughs> Okay, yeah, bro. So yeah, I've been I've been around the Bay Area nice. for a while. So that's that's a great segue to like our first question. Uh, when did you fall in love with soccer? Because I mean, you went to San Jose Clash games. Well, dang, it was crazy because I was trying to think about that. Like the first time I fell in love, but like I remember the first vivid experience, like where I was like, "Oh, this is soccer." Was probably my sister because she was a huge USA fan, like in the nineties. Because obviously they were like killing everybody, and she we watched the uh, the World Cup when they uh, they beat China. I think that was Brandy Chastain when she took off her shirt and all that. So that was like the first time I saw it and I was like, oh, okay, cool. And then like probably like right after I was watching my dad play. And then that was that was kind of where we stepped off. But watching my sister play was like where I just started boom, growing into it. Uh, that's amazing. So talk about that like from the origin story because it seems like you come from a soccer family. Everyone's involved. Like, <laughs> how was it, you know, from, you know, growing up into soccer, going to games, but going to your like first youth team and competitive or organized ball how did that all work out for you 
Oh, yeah. Well, it was crazy, my dad, because, I mean, in the beginning, I mean, I come from an immigrant family, so my dad my dad grew up playing soccer. Like, he played for Atlante. So what happened when he was playing for Atlante, it was probably, like, around, like, his 20s, and they made that transition where they sold off the club, to, and it went to Cancun. So pretty much it went from, like, Washington Mutual, it went to Chase. So it was new owners, and he kind of stopped. I mean, they, he made it way up north with my mom, you know, with that. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, pretty much we've always been kind of, like, intrigued by soccer. And so my sister started playing. That's when we were, like, going every weekend, watching her. And then my team, my time, my time came, but it was, it was like playing. I was AYSO, like, probably in the beginning, probably, like, from 8 to 9. And then, like, mm-hmm. the following year, I was playing club. And so we kind of went our separate ways because my dad was coaching my sister and my mom was taking me to, like, ODP or state yeah. tryouts. So, but it was, like, probably, like, the craziest time, man, because, um, I mean, I, parent, I come from a documented family, so at times my parents were always worried about driving without a license or just different things, like different factors. I'm like, yeah. like the deportation or whatever it was, if we were to get stopped by a car, what's the scenario if we get the car taken away? So, I mean, I, I, I remember them vividly, but then I realized, oh, how much they sacrificed and all that. So, I mean, I'm pretty fortunate to come with a soccer family. Like, my dad told me straight up, like, his dad was, like, straight into baseball. So, yeah. like, he would tell his, his, his workers, like, hey, my kid plays, like, for this club. Like, they'd be super juiced, but my, my uncle wasn't, I mean, my grandpa wasn't aware of it. Like, he was just kind of like, oh, okay. Yeah. So, <laughs> not just hella fortunate, really fortunate, to be honest. No, that's, that's amazing. So, like, real quick. So, you know, playing club ball at that age, like, how were you able to, like, um, you know, like the, the like the player cards and stuff. Do you guys just make it work? Oh yeah, no. Well, it's weird because um, well, I mean, because my dad used to be my coach at one point. Uh huh. Um, so I guess I had my own coaches until probably like the age of fourteen, fifteen. My dad started coaching me uh, and my my teammates, and we were actually really good. We were like ranked in like NorCal, and it's funny because a lot of guys I ended up playing for like big clubs. We'd end up seeing them in college, and I was like, oh damn, they would remember my team, but we were just the neighborhood team, like on yeah. the block. But the issue was, like, my dad couldn't get, like, his coaching certificate because of, like, he couldn't get a license. Yeah. So he wouldn't be able to even be on the bench with us at, like, tournaments, you know? So Yeah. Like, he'd be coaching from the other would, side. Yeah, he'd be coaching, but he was actually the real coach. So, like, stuff yeah. like that. I just, I mean, that's, like, but that's just, I mean, it's part of the system that's, like, an issue, you know? Yeah. It's, like, I mean, I think about Rich Paul, you know? <laughs> so, like, agents like that, like, you need a certain certificate to make yourself valuable or, like, in this country and it's kind of you know but yeah you're, you're right so that was just the hard part about about it but i mean i've always like enjoyed the transition of like my dad being my coach but it was just super hard right <laughs> it wasn't yeah. sometimes it was just like, too yeah. hard sure. no that that makes sense because like growing up you know i played with a couple players that um <clears throat> didn't have all the paperwork and it was just like of course crazy seeing how like the the things that they had to go through to like, you know, and their parents made a lot of sacrifices. So I always have respect for them and a lot of talented players. And like you said, like the lack of access or like the fact that you have to get all these certifications just to prove yourself when you, when you do have this, uh, the experience and the knowledge, it, it, it really makes sense. Uh, it hurts. No, I, I mean, it just limits a lot of people. I mean, it's, it's like, uh, I mean, if you don't know how to read and it's, you yeah. know, sometimes it's not, it's, it, it might just be an issue and, maybe you can't pass a writing test and you're a really yeah. good engineer, you know? Like, or, yeah. So I think that's just this issue, problems with the issues. I mean, problems in the system, but I mean, I mean, people figure it out. So I think, like I was said, I'm super blessed to come from that background. I, I learned yeah. a lot of things like a lot of other guys didn't. I mean, I see it now. Like, I mean, uh, yeah, when I was at the roots or I was like here, anytime the guy, this comes, the guys on trial, like you tell where they land on the scale. Either they, they come from a division one school where they had it all. Yeah, uh, there's some like really go getters that from like some from D- Division three team that are really trying to make it. You know? They had so, to get out the mud. Yeah, so yeah, you, you experience and you learn a lot. <laughs> yeah. So real quick, I gotta ask you because you said you played goalie and like growing up, everyone there's like a hidden like it's like an unwritten rule like goalies are crazy. <laughs> all goal yeah. all goalies are crazy in one way. So is that true first and foremost? And then Damn. because I know it's true, what level of the crazy scale are you? <laughs> damn man it's crazy because uh, I, I talked to this about my girl i mean if you ask my girl she'll be like oh yeah for sure that's crazy but i mean i, I was talking to this dude right here in north carolina that i just met and he was like yo man like he's like i talked to you on the side and you're so calm and relaxed you're so <laughs> mellow he was like and then i see you in the game and you're really like going crazy man. I don't know. I just that's that's my my place of escape i mean like this weekend like uh some dude cracked me 
And he told me, he was like, uh, and I told him, I was like, I'll do what's up with you. Like, the hey, yeah. And then he was like, he was like, uh, he said, man, shut up. And I was like, bro, I was like, I'll slap you. And he said, he said, you won't do it. You won't do it. And me trying to be the alpha in the moment, I was like, all right, all right, we're going to see right now. Like, and then I, I smacked the I smacked the dude in the corner. I smacked him and I was like, I was, which I probably shouldn't have done. That's just the Did crazy you know? in me. Huh? No, no, I'm not thinking the you ref saw it, but I told him, but I told him, I was like, he had hit me before. So like the ref, like, yeah. I was like, all right, it's cool. But you know, allowed it. But then I told him, I was like, yo, my dog, how are you going to let me come into your stadium and me slap you? Like, <laughs> so it's just, I'm real Put crazy like that because I know it's a mental game, you know? Like, I'm, yeah. I'm, I really want to be alpha at some point because, I mean, I mean, I also think I've been bullied a lot of times when I was growing up because I was really nice. So now, like, I feel like this is my place where I could kind of bully people. <laughs> but, I mean, it's not, it doesn't always go the best, obviously. I've yeah. had times where, like, I'm bullying a yeah. forward and he's going to score. I mean, he's, he's celebrating. Uh, so, I mean, so how, how I, you I, feel I, about I, trash I, talk, I then? Just, You like trash talk? It, I like trash talk. And yeah. it's hard because I've, I've met people that they're really against it. But to me, sometimes... I feel like you need that people are soft. I don't want to say people are soft, but I mean, we've all played backyard, like, basketball or whatever. Like, we've yeah. all played, like, at recess hard. Like, we've all yeah. had recess. Like, we can't forget those times at recess when guys were playing, like, it was the fourth quarter. Like, it's just, I think it comes with the game. And obviously, if I could get in your head, like... And there's guys yeah. that I see, like, I have teammates that... Oh yeah, oh that's what you think. All right, it's cool. All right, it's fine. And the next play, they're gonna do something crazy. Like, yeah, he's like, and that's just. It's. I think it's just something hidden inside. Of, just a, a, a small amount of people, because some people they'll they'll break. I, I think yeah. so. Yeah, like, so, it's because we saw. So obviously, Copa America, we saw Argentina's keeper, you know, do his trash talk and <laughs> help them win. So, yeah. are you doing anything? Nah. You know, <laughs> penalties up PK? nah. Penalties nah. Nah, huh? no, I'll pull up to you. Pull up to your spot. I'm not gonna trash talk. Cause like yeah. that's, cause I'm I've also been the guy. I mean, when I was really young, I'd also be the guy. Like, oh yeah, let's go right here. Boom, score it. And well, what you gonna say now? Yeah. <laughs> I, I never really like been the one. Like, I, I mean, I've I've learned like when you bark and something happens, like when you want to stop, yeah. like, you know. So you gotta make sure. I mean, I won't do that. Up. I won't do that. Yeah, I won't do that. Yeah. yeah. And it's, it's speaking of like, if you had a five aside of goalies, who would you pick as you like starting five? Starting five of goalies. Yeah. Mm. All right, so yeah, Iker Casillas. Okay. Oh, Jorge Campos. Yeah. Uh, De Gea, when he used to wear Nike, because he was in <laughs> Pedro and he was do this. <laughs> I tell everybody oh, that. Oh, wow, I've heard Manny, that. Man, when, so Manny used to wear Nike, when Manny used to wear Nike, he was when Manny nice. went to Nike, yeah, they were, they were the one. Yeah, they were. Um, All Black, and... Um, Damn, this guy's barely coming up in the game, but his name is Jurado. He plays for Cruz Azul. He's, uh, he's on the Olympic team. He was right in okay. behind Memo Chua. Damn, I would put Memo Chua in there instead of Jurado. Memo Chua, yeah. I'd put Memo okay. Chua instead because that's my, that's my goat. That's one of my goats. Right. Okay, what's so, that? Yeah, that was five. That was five. So, I could, I could yeah. rock with that list. I could rock with that list. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I try to go as cultural as I can on my list sometimes. I mean, there's some dope goalies. Because, <laughs> like, like, I mean, the game of soccer has just evolved so much like probably in the last, like, 10 years when it comes to mm -hmm. goalies. So it's like, we talk about Onana. I mean, I had this conversation with my friend the other day. We talked about uh, Neuer. Mm -hmm. And he was like, oh, Neuer is so dope, whatever. And my, uh, I've never knew how the words to say it, but my boy was like, nah, there's goalies that have been doing that. There's Argentinians that have been going that. He's like, it's just the first time that a white goalkeeper um, was doing it. And it was, and people were taking it in. Yeah. And I was like, oh, damn. Ooh, here we got a hot take on two cents and today. I like, and I was like, there's no way. I, he's like, I've never been able to put that in words. And I started realizing, I was like, it's true. There's so many guys. You talk about Onana. You talk about like Jorge Campos. You talk about like Kaylor Nava. Uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> keeper from, uh, keeper back in the day from Colombia. The one that did the score. Oh, from exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Him. Yeah. Uh, I read, there's just a bunch of guys, but it's just, I mean. Especially like in other countries, it's like if you if you're a goalie and you make a mistake like that, it's horrific. So I understand yeah. the game has definitely ever evolu like evolutionized in the last ten for the goalkeepers. Yeah. Real quick, um, outside of you, who is probably the I want to say the best, but like the hardest working goalkeeper in Nisa right now. Dang, <laughs> that's hard because there's I, I like because we got some we got some pretty good goalkeepers. I mean. That I like, that I personally like, and I'm just like, yo, these guys like. I like Brandon Gomez from LA Force. Um, he like he 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 makes some crazy saves. I think we play like pretty similar, but he he has some pretty good dimes. Uh, Takenda, 
no Van Dyke. I said his name to Kendon. Um, yeah, he, he's a baller as well. I, man, I like that guy a lot. Um, and obviously, uh, Stein Monster. <laughs> he, he gets his respect. He gets shout outs. He got to do what you got, you know? You got to get respect when you do. So, but he, those, those, are my, those are the guys I see that I'm just like, yeah, yeah, yeah I want to compete with those guys every day because, I mean, that's what it's about. And I know they're trying to make a name for themselves with their team the same way I am. So. No, I like but, that a lot. Sure. Yeah. Oh, the goalkeepers union. So talk about your experience, you know, in college, you know, you went to SF city and then you went to Holy names. Um, can you talk about the difference between the levels and like, you know, you talked about your experience <laughs> kind of making it out. Like, do you see college soccer still being a vehicle for, you know, players to get an opportunity? Um, so I, I think I'll talk about my experience first. So, um, Obviously, when I was going to go into like college, I was I really wanted to go into like a D one. Obviously, I probably my my academics probably weren't the best. It was like, but I think I still I definitely still had an opportunity. But um, I just probably didn't feel the, the fit the craft or like the ideal goalkeeper. I mean, um, I mean the ideal soccer player that I mean Division one soccer like wants um, definitely didn't hit that because I wasn't tall enough, you know. Um, so, uh, so it was a little bit hard for me going to City College, San Francisco. But I think the hardest part was probably being the youngest guy there. I was like really like a true freshman going into mm-hmm. it, where like I had a lot of guys. Like um, City College, San Francisco, like a, if, if you look it up, like they, obviously when it comes to football, basketball, they're yeah. notorious. But yeah. when it comes to soccer, like the the year they even turn it around. And like so, you have Bart running throughout the whole Bay Area. So you get guys from Pittsburgh. You get guys from South City. You get guys from Hayward. You get guys from Oakland. You get guys from Richmond. Like. Antioch, you know, so he gave guys from other batches. So it was for me being the best goalie in my area, it went from being like probably the best goalie in like the lake <laughs> or like this, the river, the bay, you know, and that's oh, yeah. really hard, bro. Like there's so much competition. So I got there, I started one game, boom, straight to the bench after that. Um, so I mean, it, I, I think I learned a lot because uh, I mean, I went, I went down. I can one of the stars, starting goalkeeper kicked kick the post, tore a ligament. Another goalie went in, so I re, then I realized I was third string, you know, and um, just like a bunch of uphill battles mentally. And then finally, I got my chance, and I played it through. We went to Final Four. We lost to Mount Sac. Um, so, but I think like challenges like that really like molded me. So I, I came back the following year, and it wasn't it wasn't my best. Like um, I was thinking I was going to start. I didn't start. I was third string again. Um, so I didn't play till like the last six games of the season. And once I finally did, I got like six clean shutouts. Yeah. You know? So like, I mean, it was always gut punch after gut punch every time I, I was like there. But I mean, I think that really molded me in the fact that I was playing with some real ballers. Like these are guys that they had D1 offers, but, you know, they were not going to, you know, they don't have yeah. the grades to get into Portland, you know, they don't, they don't got the grades to get into like a, a cow or something like that. So, I mean, a lot of people discredit like, uh, I mean, junior college soccer, because obviously the atmosphere, the grass, everything's a little different. There's no dorms and all that. But I think there's like a lot of true balls when it comes to the junior college level. I mean, so how much how much discipline does it take for someone to be at that junior college level? Because, you know, we see things like Last Chance U and oh, they got yeah. the football programs. So they got the basketball programs that they do it. And I've always said if Last Chance U is listening, if they want to tap in with two cents, um, we could do some things, but what, uh, yeah. like, what junior college program would you say, like, you would love to see it last chance you want from a soccer uh, perspective? Soccer perspective? Oh, it would probably have to be Mount Sac or Cerritos, I think. I mean, obviously, when, like I said, when they respect, they gave us certain respect, dude, obviously, that's one of, probably one of the top schools, you know? Those are guys mm-hmm. that, obviously, I mean, so a lot of them I've heard are from Galaxy Academy, boom, they jump into it, and they were in there, and they're still in the system, you know? Yeah. So I think that's probably like a powerhouse, but obviously there's that curse, that last chance, you know? Obviously, yeah. I would want City College or San Francisco, too, because, like I said, um, I mean, they were supposed to be last chance here, from what I've heard. It was it was supposed to happen at City College or San Francisco. And just stuff didn't well, come From the basketball much. perspective or soccer? I think it was football and basketball. Oh, yeah. One of the two. One of the two. It was like, they, they did like Laney again. instead. Yeah. yeah, they did Laney instead, which is cool, because I feel like the Laney one is a really good story um because it's kind of similar like the kids you hop on bar every day so i see when i see like city college or san francisco i really see like the grit because i mean in football i saw guys from bounce backs i saw like in basketball bounce backs d1 bounce back from soccer like so it's always a competitive mindset but like i said like there's guys there that's either make it or break it because you're there's no way you're getting out like yeah. and the system's against you like i remember when i was there you have to get you have to have 65 or 60 units to transfer and so if you start doing the math, like 
all right, you're a full-time student, 12, uh, 12, 12, 24, like you won't even have enough like, to like even transfer by the second year. So you're pretty much like an uphill battle. So now imagine if your placement test is bad, right? Mm -hmm. there, there's no way. And I think that's what hurts a lot of guys. I mean, I hear about guys out here. They're like out of high school, like they're, they're, they're like on um, the summer high school, they're already accepted into the school and they're going in. And I'm just like, Cali players are not aware of it. It's just they're not aware of the system. The system doesn't help them. And obviously no scholarships. Cause I mean, my senior year, I was getting calls from like people in Kansas. Like I'm in Dodge city, like, NGCA like uh, national teams and telling me about scholarship and I was like thinking y'all give scholarships for junior colleges like yeah <laughs> it's like, it was amazing to me so I mean like a school like that it's just because I think it's you're getting you're getting the, the side of that people don't want to see like, you're getting the side of soccer and even basketball football the kids that are really eating off a couple of noodles every day and jumping yeah. the bar gate because they can't afford it and if they get caught, they're definitely getting it. It's bad. They're not, bad. They're not gonna get. They're, they're they're in a hole for like a good like month. So it talk about like, talk about transferring over to Holy Name. Okay, How was that well, process? It was hard, bro. Because honestly, like I had a couple of schools that I was talking to. I was like talking to Cal Baptist, or Chico State. I was talking to Eve Bay, and honestly, like I wanted her to get away. And the thing was, around that time, I was fixing up my parents' uh, immigration status. Which I, I kind of pound hit myself in the head a couple times. Kind of, I mean, I should have just kind of made the jump or whatever. But my parents finished the immigration process. So I was thirty turned into twenty one. So uh, since I had a clean record, everything was cool. I was gonna apply for the citizenship. So I always felt like I had to be around home, just in case something happened in the sense mm -hmm. of like immigration or anything like that. I always felt. So I mean, I wanted to go other places, but I mean, for whole name like I had a good group of guys there. I felt it was good. I mean, the only issue was that we had like four coaching changes like throughout my two years there. You know. Yeah. So true. every year, like, I mean, the first year I didn't get to play because I was a billion. And then my second year, like, he's like, we got a coach. And there's just yeah. <laughs> some violations, stuff with him, you know? And we just, we want, like, that. I had that. I think, I'm not sure. I think somebody broke it, but I had the record for the most saves in one season. I had, like, over 80 something saves in, like, a span of, like, 10 games or something like that. So, like, obviously, statistically, it's crazy, but I was getting scored on two or five goals every game. So that uh, back line so, is trash. Yeah, <laughs> nah, defense that. didn't nah. like you or what? Nah, man. I'll tell you, like, I don't really like I like, people because that coach hasn't gotten a job since. But it was just like, bro, like, we went. <laughs> it was just weird, bro. Like, guys were really like committed, and then it wasn't committed, and then the coach was kind of like, oh, let's do film. All right, let's not do film because he's like, uh, it's not the way to do it. And it was just we had one game plan one day, and then we never did a game plan after that. And I was just, I mean, I don't want to blame for specifically the coach. Yeah. But I mean, I knew damn well like that that, that doesn't happen in college. Like, yeah. I, we lost this a man said, I don't want to blame anybody, but the coach hasn't got a job since. Yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> yo, yo, and so like, and um, and like, this is the thing. Like, uh, I mean, I've, I spoke to other coaches about it, and they were just like, "Yeah, man." Like, even Stanislaus, I think they have the CCAA like uh, record for most goals uh, scored on in a conference game. Oh. So it's not even a conference game in a season game. So I think they scored 10 or 12 on us. I'm not sure. But I went out at halftime, so I only got like five on me. So, but I'll take it. You know, it's my team. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, like, it's been a rough battle, like, when it came to yeah. soccer. There was times where I was like, nah, hell no, there's no way, bro. But, I mean, I just, you know, it just kept going, bro. <laughs> I just, yeah. I was lucky to play with club teams around the Bay or, like, at Fado Lico, you know. Like yeah. Okay. Like yeah. So, it seems like that. So how did you stay? Because, I mean, between the time you graduated and uh, and we're going to get into, you know, you signing with Oakland, how like how did you keep in shape? How do you like stay fit? Well, well, once I got to um, once I got to City College of San Francisco, um, I was I was like, it's 18. Like I already knew like I was trying to play with like some big guys, but I was always yeah. kind of intimidated. So when I was younger, like I said, my dad was coaches and um, we would get like sometimes uh we would get scrimmages with, against a Farolito in San Francisco. So these are uh -huh. the U.S. Cup uh, Open Cup champions. That everybody yeah. loves. Like, that's that's a real team. I, I love that team a lot. Um, so my goalkeeper trainer, um, like, well, the goalkeeper used to be there. Actually, used to play for Cal Victory as well, the USL Championship team uh, back in the day. The ones that um, that were like in San Francisco, and he told me he was like, "Hey, you should go play with them." And obviously, they're gonna give you money. They're gonna pay you. They're gonna, you know, they're gonna take yeah. care of you. So that was like the first time going to 18 and like pulling up and finally playing with some big dogs. I mean, probably those two, three years, probably like it was like I said, it was always hard because I mean I was I was going through it in college, you know. 
I mean, I had my own personal life, like, where, like, yeah. while I was dating and all that, like, I was going through it like that. And then I was going to this, this team where I was the backup. But when I would play, like, guys were on me, like, on me. So I think that's where I kind of get my crazy from because these guys, these, like, I don't know what time I was like. I, mean, I hit the ball. I forgot it was, like, a 50-50 ball, and I hit it, and it was just bad. And the dude looked at me, and I was like, oh, my bad. He was like, yo. Well, I mean, in Spanish, he was like, what are you thinking? Like, like, what do you have in your head? Like, you just started going dumb. And I just kind of was like, oh, and I, I shined away from it. Like, I, I, I got oh. intimidated. That was the first time I ever, like, been yelled at like that. And I felt some type of way. And the dude came after me after. And he was like, hey, my God, like, I'm sorry, but that's just how it is. Oh, <laughs> and yeah. I remember. And I was just like, damn, you're right. And, I mean, the, after that, like, I made a goal mistake, which cost us a game. And uh, it's obviously I'm 18, pulling up. Like, I played against the Olympic yeah. Club. We tried that game. I played the next game. We messed up because I, I went up for a cross, and I didn't grab it. And some dude yelled at me. And then the other goalkeeper, because he was injured, he tells me, he's like, hey, dog. He's like, straight up, like, I know you messed up, but don't ever let somebody speak to you like that. He's like, because these people could talk, but they don't know what it is to be a goalie. Like, at the end of the day, like, when you make a mistake, you're going to have to go all into your car all alone because like, you're the only guy in that box. Like, other than that, bro, like, do not take anybody to be able to speak to you like that. Yeah. And I remember I took that in and I was like, oh, yeah, hell no. So, I mean, I made the most out of it because at that point I felt like I had to be held really firm and uh, hell aggressive and, like, really passionate when, like, when I do my work. Cause, I mean, after that, like, I was Sunday, – Sunday league teams were paying me to just play a game, you know, and just things like yeah. that. But it was just, like, the professionalism. I was like – that was like I tell some of my guys, that was the first time I ever went to a locker room because we only have a locker room at Boxer Stadium. I go in there. One of the guys, he he won the Libertadores with uh, Nacional, I think. I forgot. And he's brushing his teeth before he goes outside to play. And I was like, oh, shit. You know, like, mm. that's crazy, like. Guy, my guy needs to look nice. And that kind of was like, this dude doing too much. But nah, that's, that's professionalism, bro. Like, yeah. People do their hair. People do this stuff because it, it's work. Like, guys feed their families with that. And especially there in Fado Rico because they're paying. Oh, yeah, they don't money. play over there. Yeah, yeah they're, they're, they're feeding their guys. Like that, Guys are really trying to feed their families. So, I mean, at that point, that was that was the thing I needed. Just I was there for a good three years. I had to move on. So, I went to CD Aguilucci USA, RIP, you know, lower league soccer. I mean, they're, they're not a team no more, but I played there and then I ended up playing like the, the two, well, two U.S. Open Cups and uh, two MPSL West Region Cups. And uh, it's funny because I just found this out like probably like a month ago when I played U.S. Open Cup and we beat SF City, we went to go play at Sac Republic. I actually was goalie and it was against Rod Underwood's team. So, <laughs> Damn, like full circle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was like, oh, that was you. I was like, oh, yeah. I was like, man, so. I mean, just little things like that. Like, it's like yeah. I was, I'm just blessed to be like around like a good team. And honestly, I hope like the Aguilucho, the Federico team, like go into like like history forever in like Bay Area soccer. Because I, I hope people are taking tabs on it. Because you know, like I think Bay Area has such a rich culture when it comes to soccer. And if we don't take care of it, who's gonna take care of it? Like, no, that's true. I, f- I feel like real ones do know about you know that that organization and like from the standpoint of like Sunday League. I think any any player that wants to like make it to the next level. Uh, has to play in Sunday League and play with those older guys. Um, I had the opportunity when I was in high school to play, like, with some older guys and, you know, dribbling around, thinking I was a shit, and then some guy come and crack me. It's like, yeah. you know, you need that. You need to get humble real quick. You yeah, need to bro. be able to stand up for yourself. I think it's really important. So any parent that's listening, you know, you, you want your, your your kid to play at a higher level, you have them play with the no. big boys. No, I think it's important. I mean, it's important, too. I mean, I had this... I was actually, it was one of the coaches for like a, like well actually one of the top like Pac-12 schools over there in, uh, in the Bay Area. And I'm talking to him and he's telling me about this kid. And he's like, oh yeah, this kid, he's a baller. He's 13 playing with 18 year olds. And it was like, it's crazy. Club soccer, you know, he's playing three yeah. ages up. He was like, that's crazy. And I was thinking, damn, that's crazy. Boom, closed the door, got in my car. And I started thinking, yo dog, guys do this in the hood all the time. We go play, four, we're 14, 15 years old, going to go play Sunday leagues against 26, 28 years old. Yeah. And there had, definitely has to be an ex-pro in those Sunday leagues. Like, let's not play. There's a lot of ex-pros. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, there's a guy from San Jose that he used to play in Atlas, you know, like Atlas First Division. And he's like, yeah. yeah. And he's like, and it's, just, it's just guys like that. So when I heard that, I was just like, all right, we, we can't be blind to it. Like, guys, kids been doing this, you know? Like, yeah. Kids in the hood been doing this. It's just, you know, I think we just... 
take care of our players a little bit too much. Like at 14, so, all right. we so real quick, real quick. So you, you talk about players and exposure and access and stuff like that. So, you know, U.S. soccer and the so- soccer in the States is trying to find ways to, you know, get into the communities or like they say, get into the urban communities. So what would your uh, answer or solution be for like how they can do it without like being corny about it, you know? It's hard, bro, because honestly, like this academy, like uh, academy system, it was, that's what's killing off like all these clubs. I mean, remember when it used to just be citywide? Like it was like, oh, you're playing against Concord, you're playing against like uh, San Jose. I think what really has to happen, bro, is just, it's hard because I don't like, I don't really want to offend people because I mean, I mean, the game of soccer it really is based off money. It's, yeah. it's a pay to play. Like somebody has to pay the bills for the field and all that. And he's like, but I think the way is just like, I think just recently the national team just started realizing, yo, we need some brothers on this team. We need some fathers <laughs> on this team. Like we need some, we yeah. need some real ones. Like, yeah. And I think that's what people have to realize. Soccer is ugly. They have to realize there's, there's, there's people in, like I said, East Charlotte, or there's people in East Oakland, or there's people in the Bronx that play ball. You got to go in there and play for those communities, you know, and go find yeah. those kids. That's what it is. Like, and obviously standards, like standardized testing or certain GPA and all that, that's what limits kids. And it, it and it's hard because right now, like with this whole NISA, USL, NASL, all these issues, we, we need to fill in the gray area for all these people. Like mm-hmm. we need to fill it in. And in the sense of like third division, fourth division, we need to figure it out because that ha- that's the big factor. Kids got to learn the real pathway. You know, there's like five different pathways to be pro now. Like, yeah. Not saying, but I mean, you go to England and you could probably hop on your like you could like Jamie's Vardy. Like I see him and I think of, I think of myself and I'm one of those guys that I feel like I slightly went through the crack. Like, and I think like I said, the gray area has to be filled in from referees because imagine being like I tell the guys, imagine being a college division one referee and then having to you say, Oh, I want to do my next rank. I wanna I wanna do the next level. And then you're just like, okay, boom, I'm a ref at MPSL game. All right, I want to make the next step up. PDL. All right, cool. And then you're going into the USL championship and being a ref for a game. No, like, there's no way, dog. Like he's like, there really is levels to it. Like there's there's no That's way. Right. He's like, there's levels to it. Like I think like anything else. So I mean, like I said, I've played like Sunday League, I've played NPSL, I've played San Francisco Premier League. So I've kind of seen it and I've noticed that people get lost because there's a disattachment from third division to fourth division. There's a, there's a disattachment. We need to find that. Mm-hmm. If not, like a bunch of Mexican a bunch of players are gonna go to Mexico, a bunch of players are gonna go to England, a bunch of players are gonna go figure out and get their double nationality and go play for the Jamaican national team. <laughs> like, <laughs> they're not playing. We're, 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 yeah. Guys are spreading their wings now. They realize, I don't need this system. Like, and that's what somebody told me. They were just like, how come? Like, cause, I mean, obviously, the, the last fucking two months of like the Mexico-USA has been crazy. Like Those games yeah. are like, hectic. And people were like, how come you don't like the USA team? And I was like, he's like, you know what? I feel American too. He's like, and I feel Mexican too. He's like, and sometimes I feel like neither because, I mean, I look at the USA team and a lot of these guys don't look like me. Mm-hmm. They don't. I told my girl tells me the same thing too. She's like, I, he's like, she was like, I told her, and I told her, I was like, they asked you to play for the USA or Mexico national team. Who would you play for? And she was like, I played for the Mexico national team. Like, those girls look like me. And that's, you know, that's what, yeah. that's how you feel more like attached to, you know? <laughs> it's like, no, that's interesting because we're going to bring that up <laughs> later, but uh, that's interesting that you said that. <laughs> Uh, I know that's but, like, um, but I mean that's this that's what it is. Like it's just some people are so connected to the communities. People have to realize like you're not gonna take the community out of these people. Yeah, you you're guys. not gonna you're not gonna take the ugly or the rugged or the the hurt or the you know the sacrifice yeah. out of these people. You know, like you're not. There's no way. Like, so I think that's what U.S. Soccer has to figure out. Like third, fourth division, and lower the franchise franchise fees on these clubs because they're paying a, a bunch of money <laughs> for no reason. Okay. <laughs> Like real stuff. Like okay. they're just getting interns. They're just throwing interns in there. They can't be doing that. So I think that's that's what it is. So if we clip anything out, U.S. soccer, please listen to this. <laughs> okay, Commissioner Kevin. Hopefully one day. Let me tell it. Hopefully one day, bro. <laughs> we'll see. No. but yeah, that's, it that's just my. That's my. I think that's that's where we need to like get to in, in U.S. soccer.
No, I mean, you hit the nail on the head. Like, like you said, exposure, you got to make sure it's tangible. Like if I'm playing in the streets or playing in the communities, I got to see something that like, all right, I see that guy that looks like me or like has come from where I come from and like made it. And if we don't have that, if we're not tapping into those communities, then it's going to be, uh, it's going to be very hard. And like to segue, obviously when we talk about teams that are doing a better job of tapping into communities, uh, Oakland Roots is doing that and you signed with them last year. So talk about what that was like. And then we're going to get into, you know, you and the full circle moment with Coach Underwood <laughs> and uh, Stumptown. All right, cool. I love, I love Oakland Roots. I love the people there. Tommy, Tommy. Actually, my sister works for the club too. Idris, uh, Steven, they're all great people. They've done some great things. Um, like, so like really fortunate to like be a part of it and like actually be like one of the like founders with some of the guys, you know, like with Nicola, mm-hmm. Devonte, and you know, those guys. Um, but like how should I start, man? So the first, okay, well, it's crazy because I did the open tryouts. I had already spoken to Benno. He's mm-hmm. like, um, and he had told me like, hey, you know what? I shout want you to be Benno. part of this. Yeah, shout out shout Benno. Out. I haven't seen Benno in a while, but yeah, I need to call him there. Um, and he, he tells me, he's like, oh, you know what? I want you to be part of this. Like, we're bringing it back. And it's funny because I had spoken to Ben apart like four years before the whole thing kicked off. And so uh, I knew coaches. And coaches were telling me, you ain't bringing no pro soccer to Oakland. Hey, where are you going to put the team? Where are you going to put it? How? Ben? Bro, I've, I've known Ben since I was coaching him like a little kid. You think? So, I mean, I've, I heard it. I heard it from different angles. I've heard it from guys that are like, you really think, bro, what league? What league? And I was just like, Damn, well, I was hearing about this Founders Cup. I was hearing about all that. So I was kind of like, you know what? Like, he's like, maybe. So, I mean, I was still playing with Aguiluchos. And then uh, actually that summer, I was playing with San Ramon FC. So it was like probably my last MPSL season. And honestly, I was already going through it. I was already like, this is it. I'm, yeah. you know, I'm hanging up the gloves. I'm already hitting this age. Like, how my girlfriend? Like, obviously, like. I was working for the county for a bit. So, like, I mean, I, I liked what I was doing. I was working with the community. Was, but that thing with that soccer always, like. That itch, man. Yeah, man. Like, that's just my escape. And so, I was trying out all that worked out. So, boom, the week prior. And I know Johannes. I know Johannes, like, <laughs> for a while. Harish. Shout out to Harish. And um, we, were, uh, we were just chopping it up one day. And uh, I guess he was already signing on him with Julio Devante. So, it was kind of, like, just all coming together. And uh, and I had gone to the trial, so I was thinking, though, they're going to hit me up soon. And it took a while to hit me up. <laughs> so um, one of my guys, uh, Ricardo Gary, he tells me, he's like, oh, yeah, we all got physicals on Thursday. Like, on Friday, like, we're all meeting up to, like, uh, to go get the physicals done and everything. So I was like, all right, cool. And I was like thinking, yo, this dog hit me. And, and Benno has to, because it was a jersey drop. And Benno told me, he was like, hey, pull up to the jersey drop. Is good. Like, be ready and so Benno was like, um, he's like, yeah, bro, I'll hit you later this week to see what's up. Like, you know, like, so we can yeah. confirm you, lock you in. And I was like, all right, cool. Bro, no call, no nothing. So I was like, all right, <laughs> damn, bro, I was going through it. Like, like that itch, like crazy itch. Yeah. Like, and so I guess that Wednesday hit. And, um, and so I, you guys heard of Blady on. And um, so I pull up, like, uh, actually, me and my girlfriend, we're going to go to the Harris Street party, like, in downtown. We're just going to kick it. And honestly, that's not where I wanted to be because, I mean, Everybody loves playing soccer, like MPSL, but I wanted that yeah. jump, obviously. So yeah. I was a little hurt because I was like, man, they, they're about to start this pro team without me? Like, no way. Yeah. So I'm getting my feels, and um, my girl's like, let's go. And I was like, oh. I told her, I was like, hey, you know what? It's cool if I go get this, like, goalie session because I just, like, I had, I had that itch. So I wanted to go get a workout in. Boom, I went to go get the workout in, and my girl went with me. And then we ended up, uh, and somebody called me and said, hey, I need a goalie for play. I was like, all right, cool. I'll pull up. Just because, I mean, I'm just trying to get my mind off of it. But at that point, like, it was already, like, eight something. So I didn't get, I wasn't getting no call. And so um, I talked, Johannes was there. And Johannes was like, hey, bro, relax. Like, they're about to call you. Don't trip. And I was like, dog, it's like 8.30. <laughs> like, what yeah. you talking about? Like, ain't nobody making no business calls at this time. Like, people tech. And so I go to Bladium. And this is, like, probably one of the points in my life where, like, I was, it was weird because like I was gonna start balling in front of a bunch of people at Bladium, especially Wednesday nights, because Wednesday nights X Pro, everybody, you got guys that play the Seattle Sound, they were street ball, you know, Fox. Yeah. They played at different teams throughout, like, like obviously the Americas. And we're playing, and obviously that's like my fun show. I love it, but like that's my far by everything, my heart combo is like so I'm making shots and we're obviously playing against these dudes, like my OGs. And I say my OGs, like my Hayward OGs, like my sister's like probably like five years old, five years older than me, and 
these are guys I looked up to, like, soccer-wise, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, I've always, like, thought they were, like, cool peeps, you know? And, and they were, I mean, they were just kind of hating that day, and I felt it. I was just like, I was like, this fun. So we're playing, I actually, like, we ended up winning the game, but I was just playing crazy that day. So, but I remember at, at one point I stopped, and I was like, I don't want to play here no more. <laughs> like, I'm mm-hmm. darn dog. Like, I don't want to play indoor no more. Like, like, I saw a bunch of people around the whole thing, and I was like, the same the same for me bro like this, yeah. this doesn't satisfy me this doesn't so when did they sign you they well i had to get on trial that was a thing like uh-huh. so like they called me that night later i go walk into my car yamo hey we need you to check in coming tomorrow go get your physical all that so i'm just like like at 11 like 59 <laughs> 11 59 i remember it was like 11 58 i'm driving home and they call me hey you know what okay you need you to come in tomorrow i was like all right, cool. Yeah, I'm there. Pull up, yeah, pull up. I pulled up to get my physical with Larry Jackson, with uh, Jack McInerney, you know? Yeah. So, so we pulled up. Guy, Jack. Like, yeah, Jack, Jack. What's Larry up to, by the way? Yeah, Larry, he's like, he called me a couple of times, too. He's yeah. like, uh, when I was in the Bay Area, he actually he congratulated me when I, when I came to North Carolina. Like, nice. Yeah, he actually he gave me, like, a good heads up about the area and everything, because okay. I played out here at Wilmington, Wimmer, well, yeah. Hammerheads. Yeah, yeah. So, um, and so at that point, I was just, I, I mean, I, I was spooked because I was like thinking, ooh, they're about to sign me. Next week I come in and they were just like, well, if you have a binder on your locker, you're signed. And I go in my locker, nope. And I was, I couldn't shut it. Obviously I'm a rookie. I don't realize I didn't yeah. sign a contract, man. So um, we have a beat test and yo, dog, I'm not, I'm not fit. <laughs> 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 but so like, I knew, like, they tell us, oh, it's coming on Tuesday. We're first week, pictures, everything. Yeah. Obviously the media and they're like Tuesday. I was like, damn. Yeah. So I got with like a summer, I got, I got some of the group of the guys and I was like, hey, what's up? How do you do this? Like, and I just started, and they said they, were, they did a harder one. So I was doing yeah. it that week, bro. I was trying to lose much weight. I was like, and uh, y'all, did the, y'all did the ones where it's like stop for 10 seconds and then go again? No, no, no. I was continue. like, e- e- continuing me. So uh, yeah, yeah, nope. I remember we, he's like, so I was just doing a bunch of stuff at the gym cycle, making sure I was rested, bro. That day comes and mind you, I'm, 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 I know I'm unfit, but I think there was something on my blood and I was pounding or something, bro. So doing it, and I remember as I was going, I saw Larry, and I saw I saw Larry go down probably like after like probably like yeah, level, Larry, level nice eight, it. like level eight, and I was like, all right, cool. But I'm like, I'm on trial, so I'm kind of like, yeah. there's like four goalies, five goalies, and I'm like, damn. So I see the other dude that I'm competing against, and I see him going, and I'm like, damn, bro. I'm just going, I'm just kind of like closing my eyes, going back and forth, yeah. and then I see him going through it, and I was like, all right, cool, boom. And I, once I saw him stop, I was like, all right, I'm done. And I was like, hell no. Nah. And I just kept going, bro. Uh-huh. <laughs> kept going. So like, I ended up being like the fourth one, like the fourth, like fourth, like fourth to last. Yeah. And that was crazy because like, I know I didn't, I, I know I wasn't fit. I just had it in me. And I remember like, Paul, I gotta make this. Yeah, and Paul Bravo came up to me after, and, I, and that's when I knew I kind of made a name for myself because obviously there's guys on trial. And Paul Bravo pulled up to me and told me he's like, "Hey, you know what? Like, I was really impressive. Like, where are you from?" He started telling them, and he was like. He's like, when we were going for the Olympic team, he was like, it was Brad Fido and uh, Casey Keller. And he was like, and Casey was the starter. He was like, and that guy was, he was like, going, going, going. And once Casey down, Brad Fido just took it to another level. And he was like, and Brad Fido was the last one to finish. He was like, that was really crazy. And I was just like, no, nah, you know? that's, yeah. that's I'm so glad you told that story because <laughs> yeah, when it bro. comes to like the intangibles, that's yeah. the way to make a squad. So nah, like, bro. Yeah, really, people yeah, have bro. made squads simply just off their beat test. Like no, yeah, that, it shows, like it shows the coach, like yo, I'm willing to, you know, put my neck out to, no, to yeah. get the job. And once he said that, I mean, I, I knew who Paul Bravo was, but then now I, I, I mean, I talk, I, I people ask me, you know, how's Paul or whatever. I mean, I don't speak to Paul like that, but then I realized, yo, this man knows what he's talking about. It's not no, like, you know, yeah. especially from and where we come from. There's a bunch of guys that will throw like smoke in your head. Hey, bro, you're the man. You're that guy. You're the you're the best one in this area. And then once you come get outside your area, you're not ready for it, you know? Like, yeah. So, I mean, stuff like that is when I realized I was like, oh, yeah. Like, I mean, <laughs> that was just – so, I mean, that following week, I mean, we went to go eat. And uh, Idris actually pulled me to the side. It was crazy. He pulled me to the side. We are all chilling. So, I was kind of thinking. He was like, hey, my God, I heard what happened at practice, like, about him. Like, me doing well at the B test. And he was like, hey, I'm about to put you on payroll. Like, he was like, he's like, you're really straight. And I was like, Whoo. Ooh, bro, like, yeah. it's just something I've been waiting for a long time. So, like, at that point, I was just like, all the Sunday league games, 
all the times where like coaches would tell me they were going to pay me and didn't pay me in Sunday games and never got back to me, never turned my calls. Like, but I got reps in like, Oh, it was worth it. Like that's when I'll, yeah. <laughs> it was, and I mean, it was, it was a little bit more like meaningful to me. Cause like, that's my area code, man. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, like, to play for your know, hometown like, is, is, yeah, is yeah. a different feeling. Yeah. And that's what I represent like a lot of people. And I mean, that's what, that's what really represents all of us, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, so I think that was just like, that was just one of probably the best experience me learning. It's like stepping into the game. But obviously off of that, like I had to learn how to be a better professional, eat better, sleep better, um, just be a better person, um, yeah. know how to act like in front of like people. If I say hi to buddy, how to say hi to somebody, you know how to act respectful. If I see my homies, I can't be cussing all the time, just yeah. things like that. So like so I was like I was for I was fortunate to be with a good group of people, especially with like Muma, Chris, um, Chris Christian, like I said, Jack. Um, he's like uh, I learned a lot from Boxy as well. Like, um, so it was just a lot of good guys that would just tell me some, spit some real yeah. game, like real game on a constant level. Yeah, and that's, yeah what that's what it's them. all about. You guys had a lot of experience that first year, and yeah. I feel like you you learned how to be like a professional. So, yeah. what have you like? What have you took from that? And like now with your experience with Stumptown? Um, honestly, bro, like uh, obviously, obviously, we good. Clubs, obviously, they're different just how it is. But what I've taken the most is just, I mean, making sure, like, every day you go out to the field, like, that's that's really your job. I remember Muma said it once, too. We were there. I guess we all sat down in the locker room one day, and we all kind of had a conversation in the beginning of the season. He said, and Muma's real, like, just, man, that man is something else, man. Like, Muma Bernardo is, like, a legend, that man. And he's told us straight up, hey, he's like, some of you guys, like, I was like, I didn't really enjoy your seat, your locker, take care of it, have it clean. He was like, because sometimes people go through that door, he was like, and never come back and never have a locker ever again in their life. He was like, he's like, don't make it hard on yourself. Make it hard on the coach. Make them hard, make it hard for him to not play you. He yeah. was like, he was like, he was like, because some guys, some of you guys might never be pro ever again. And I remember I used to hear those conversations and I said, bro. Damn, bro, I need to get minutes. Or damn, I need a player. Damn, when I get my chance, I need to make my mark. When I make my debut, I need to do it. I need to do something. So I think I when he would say stuff like that, it would, I mean, people people say sometimes soccer is like life or death. Like is, is our soccer is not life or death. And in some sense, like to me, like I don't want to say it's life or death, but it's life or make something out of it. Like you know, like no, I'm feeling. Like, and I mean, I mean, I've had, I mean, the time I started for Roots, like I, I didn't play, I didn't get as many minutes as a lot of people thought I would. Like I probably played like two games. I dressed up, like I was always rostered, but I wasn't, you know? And mm -hmm. the time I did play, I mean, I've been in for like 15 minutes against Juarez. And the time I did start, like I was with Tabo Guzman. And I remember when they told me, hey, you're starting, like you're going to be the guy. And I remember I was just like, damn, like, and it's like, uh, um, it's that part by Drake, that line by Drake, and I was thinking about it my whole night. It was like, uh, I'm 24 hours from greatness. I'm that close. And then, and when I when I heard that line, and I was just thinking, Yo, dog, in 24 hours, I'm really gonna be playing against Miami FC. Um, we haven't really done too well this season. He's like, and if I don't do well, dog, I'm not getting re-signed. Why would he resign me? Like, you know, mm -hmm. like I don't have nothing to show for, dog. I don't got no minutes. Like, I better duke it out. You know, like. I mean, uh, I mean, the next day, like, it was just crazy because, I mean, once I got to play, like, that moment, like, I mean, I was walking out. I was, like, almost gagging because I was going to throw up. It was, like, but then I, it was weird, bro. I, I looked at the scoreboard, and I saw Miami FC, Oakland Roots, and then I thought about my high school, and I thought about the mud that I used to play in at Hayward High. Like, you know, yeah. like, like, they have the cross-country championships at Hayward High, so you know that grass is not well like, maintained. Like, mm -hmm. so, and... Bro, like I just remember the first free kick they shot. I made it was a top like I made a, I made like a top like right into the bar. I made a save, and then I was like, oh no, this is really me. And then like I think like five like fifteen minutes later, then I assisted to Jack. You know, like my first mm -hmm. pro assist, my first game pro assist, and everything. And I remember like as I was kicking the ball, I heard somebody say, no, 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 KG, don't do it. And I mean, I did it, and it, and worked, it worked out. Out. and it worked out. But that same ball, bro, I've hit that in Sunday league all the time, and. When I got back, my friend told me that. I mean, after we were done from Miami, we flew back. One of my friends was like, yo, Kevin, you know what's crazy? I seen you do that play all the time at Sunday League, and you did it in the pro game. And I didn't think much of it first until I saw the film to it, and I was just like, 
yeah, man. Like, and it's it's scary, bro. Like, it's yeah. real scary because you don't know how life's gonna turn out sometimes. So, like, when people say it's life or death, nah, bro. Sometimes for some guys, they they, they treat it that way because I mean, other people feed their families from this, you know. Like, no, that's facts. I mean, some, at the end of the day, it's a job. It's like it like soccer brings so much joy to people and like so yeah. much value. So it's like, why not treat it like a life or death situation? Not to say that if, if it doesn't work out, you're going to die, but to that extent where you put <laughs> How you much, feel? It feels like uh, you, know. you put that much passion into it. So like, let's get into Stumptown. Um, you know, how is it playing? Like, I know they got the play, uh, the fall season coming up. What are some of you guys' goals? Um, honestly, man, I, I really want to end up like, we want to win the whole thing. I feel like we got a group of guys. Obviously, we got like this bad little start against Chatham. Um, I feel like we're, whoever watched the game saw some good glimpse. Um, I think we just only had a problem with the up line, with the forward line. Probably need somebody up top. Um, but no, I think my guys want to go the whole way, you know. Um, it just, it's, we've been having a uh, mental like performance, um, like coaching with, uh, with somebody called Esme. And uh, she's with our goalkeeper coach as well. And we're, I think it's just storming right now. We're like, we're trying to get it in. We're trying to all realize where we come from because it's all different backgrounds it's a little bit of from the team from like last season but i think it's just forming it together and hopefully we start clicking like a little bit before midway just so we can get a run like and go into like hopefully like the top spots yeah so well like when it comes to being a goalie like do you have any personal goals because i feel like as a goalie like you can have all these personal goals but it is contingent on the team yeah. like if you have like a no, I have know, defense you know no, how does it work well, out well honestly like this I mean, it's crazy because I didn't know what to expect when I pulled up the first time in North Carolina, like for the first time of the season. Because um, our first game was against Detroit. Honestly, I just I just wanted us to do good. I mean, I wasn't really thinking about my stats. I just mm-hmm. honestly, I was just trying to make a name for myself. To be honest, like I just wanted an opportunity to like finally play. <laughs> like, yeah. you know, so like, I mean, my goal was always like to have like three. I mean. I don't, like, I don't believe in shutouts, to be honest. I've never been the goalie to have, like, a bunch of shutouts or anything. Only, like, when I was in junior college, but that's probably, like, what, like, eight years ago? Yeah. But um, but for the most part, like, yeah, I just kind of want my low, like, low percent goal percentage, but I definitely want to win, man. Like, I definitely yeah. want I, I definitely want this club to grow. I definitely want guys to get an opportunity. I want my all my, def- my, front, my front line to do their thing, and hopefully they'll move up to whatever they want to do. If they want to play championship, they want to, some of them want to play for the national, um, national teams. Well, they can, like, uh, but it's, it's obviously, it's just about. So if you win, if you result. win, if you win four, three, you're not, you're not worried about it. Like you be getting a three goals a game. You guys still win. Yeah, yeah. Bro. Obviously I'll be hot. Cause I'll be like, damn, yeah. I need to start making <laughs> savings. But honestly, Hey, let's go. We got that done. Like, yeah. Respect. Okay. Like, I like that's, that. that's how Rod, Rod's been like that with us too. He's yeah. Like, hey, it might be ugly. We get it done. <laughs> yeah. right, we got you. Yeah, we got you. Not about Coach Rod. Yeah. No, Anything yeah, no, you can tell us man. about Coach Rod from a coaching perspective? Damn. Well, coaching perspective, man. I mean, the coaching perspective, it's crazy because I mean, some guys in the beginning, it's a little bit different because I mean, guys, because the guys, guys usually want to touch the ball nice and firm, nice and quick, and all that. Yeah. It's just more of a composed. Hey, know your shapes, know your triangles, possess the ball, keep the ball. Ain't nobody gonna hurt us if we keep the ball. So like. Really composed man. Like I love him a lot. He's he's, he's really cool. And honestly, his, his pregame speeches are crazy, crazy. Oh, bro. okay. We might like, have to get one of them. No, no okay. bro. No, whoever record. No, I'm telling you, the first one I heard from him, dude, I was gonna start bawling in there. Like it was crazy. Man. I mean, I'm gonna, I'm gonna break this one quick because I, yeah, I know <laughs> like, y'all busy. But this is the one, man. So we're we all got together. Obviously, people who know the Sun Town, like, boom, we probably got together for three weeks. So I, I was at the tryouts. Uh, I stayed for another extra week because he wanted to see me a little more. I was like, all right, let's do it. Like, so, I mean, obviously that, that was happening. Like, he gave me the opportunity. Like, he, he told me straight up, like, I am a call Roots. Let me see how they feel. Like, how's everything, you know? Like, how you did at Roots. He wanted yeah. just the background of me and he gave me a shot, man. So I've always looked at myself like an underdog at some point, you know? And I think everybody does, you know? And shit, yeah. everybody's against me. Everybody don't want me to win. Like, I'm a win, you know? So... I, I, yeah, that's that's the feeling a lot of people get, and that's cool. Like you know, that that, that drives people. So this this man pulls up to the room, and he's like, "Hey, you know what, you guys? Like, I know you guys all come from different backgrounds. However, you got here because we got guys that are real pros already. And they didn't have a team, you know, or guys yeah. that are trying to get into the cracks, or guys that went to five different teams, or guys that have been living in the car for like two months trying to find a team." He's like, "Because after the pandemic, they just everybody was starting giving out tryouts like everywhere. Everybody was trying." 
Yeah. And so he's like, wherever you guys came from, you guys have soccer your own way. He's like, but if there's one thing, like, it's like, like, obviously he said it's all about the ball, but he's like, he's like, if, if yeah, I said it today too, it was just, he said, if you think you're an underdog is like your whole life, you're never going to mount him. He's like, he's like, you're never going to, you're never going to win. You're always going to say somebody's better than you. He was like, he was like, you're always going to be okay with being second best. He was like, he's like, me? I'm not no underdog. He was like, he's like, so we're going to go fight? Fight? And I was just like, bro, like, you know? And once he started telling me, like, about being an underdog, I was just, I was a little mad at myself because I've always thought about that. But then I was like, hell no, I'm not using that, that, that phrase anymore. Yeah. There's no way, dog. After what this man told me, hell no, bro. Like. There's there's so many coaches that never gave me an opportunity, like right? because I was too short, because you know I don't fit the style. Like I wasn't strong enough. I didn't come from a D1 school, or like just so like the fact that this man gave me an opportunity to tell me this, to 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 give me in a jersey to let me start, and then tell me, hey, dog, you're not an underdog. Whatever you've been through, you know, whatever you've gone through, wherever you played, like he's like whatever you like, people told you no, whatever you've gone to trials and. For, to put yourself out there and be told no, like to get the opportunity and play and start, I was like, nah, there's no way, bro. So like, I'm almost balling in there, bro. Like, <laughs> and it's just, like, it's just, and, and the things like that. Like, people, you can look for phrases, you can look for YouTube videos and all that, but it's like when you're in the moment and you feel something like that, and it, it's just, you know, like yeah. you're ready to go to war for somebody. So I mean, once he said that, I was like, "Yo, <laughs> we're gonna have to get Coach Underwear to like let us record one of these nah, uh, pregame speeches." Nah, man. Hey, my man sponsored by Nike too, so he like yeah. he real, 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 yeah. real, 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 like, real yeah. nah, if you guys how, how, how is it with the new? Uh, you know, obviously Charlotte's coming in. Um, like you guys got a lot of you know got a lot of love in the city. Uh, how you feel like the the community supporting you guys? Like, wh- what are y'all doing on that standpoint? You know, yo, honestly, like, um, I think it's just, it's, it's, it's kind of strange, bro, because the team was supposed to die, bro. Like, people were thinking the team was going to die, you know? So, um, yeah. and honestly, like, the fact that our, the, that our fans pull up to the games and it's slowly, like, build it up, like, um, and I'm, I was excited about it, bro, because, um, I mean, I could come from Cali, bro, and I'll tell you straight up, to get fans in Cali is hard, and it's right. hard because... Me, me, or any of us will pull up to a game. It's wherever it's at. It could be at the Coliseum or whatever, and we'll pull up and we'll be like, "Dog, I know two guys are better than that." Or you know what? Why am I going to cheer for somebody I'm better than? <laughs> <laughs> no, and that's how, that's that's the talent level we got in Cali. So he's like, um, "But if there's one thing, oh, we don't appreciate our people in Cali. Like we definitely don't, bro. Like, mm-hmm. We definitely don't. Like we don't." And I remember Kanye West tweeted that one time. Like we talked about artists, and he was like, "The thing is that the Bay Area is so talented." He's like, "But y'all don't love each other." <laughs> and I was like, "Yeah, I, I'm, I, I agree with that, you know." Like, and so, um, because we'll bring other guys from other communities and play for a club, and that of course guys aren't gonna love the club like that. Like, yeah, they don't, bro. Who's gonna love your neighborhood? All right, let's be real. All right. <laughs> Who's gonna love your neighborhood the same way you do it? And that's how this these people here. That's how they are. You know, like mm-hmm. they, they they love where they're from. Like it's so diverse. It's, honestly, I, I love it because it's a black city as well. Like they're really dope when it comes to LGBT community. You know, um, I haven't gotten into my uh, to my uh, my West Side or our Latinos are like, that's where they said it's a conquered area. That's what they call it over here. Okay. And, um, but to be honest, like they they want people to prosper from here. They want people from Charlotte to prosper in. And, and you know they want soccer to grow. They don't. They're not playing like when it comes to like if your club gives a bad statement or something like that. And I mean that's what I appreciate. That I wish people were more like that when it comes to the sports. Like not be so apologetic because at the end of the day, like you go to McDonald's and you buy your food and they mess up. Like you're gonna be mad. And the same way Rod tells us, you're selling something. He's like, this is our product. Like. You got to make people want to buy a ticket. If not, they're not going to buy a ticket. People are going to buy a ticket and then realize, oh, this is like buying a Slurpee at 7-Eleven. Like, yeah. it's nothing, you know? So, like I said, like, here when it comes to the city, like, I love the fact that it's really green. It's the South. The pork is fire. But the people love their soccer and love their athletes. And I think that's, that's incredible. Like, you know? <laughs> it's, like, so, uh, that's, that's, I mean, it's, it's, it's good to play for a team where the community supports you. Um, I think that makes all the difference, you know, in terms of like even playing at home games, it it makes all the difference. 
No, yeah, man, because I don't see my family. So like, I see a lot of these people. Yeah. I'm like, hey, and honestly, when it comes That's to your new family, when it comes to game day, yeah, when it comes to game days and when it comes to stuff like that, and we just talk about, um, you know, I just toot something out, and I could tell the love, man, and it's, and honestly, when we lose, bro, I'm disappointed because, hey, how am I gonna put? How am I gonna start tweeting or something when I just lost the game? Yeah. Or am I gonna retweet like somebody like having like a. I don't know, like somebody scored that um, Iguodala's pulling back up to like, you know, I, I should, you yeah. know, like it's just things like that shouldn't be like so calm. Cause like I told my dad, like, I mean, my dad even told me like, cause my dad's a huge open wheel fan. So obviously the scenario they're going through right now, like he's not the happiest because he's like, he's like, cause he's like, yo, this team, like we could do this. Like all these other teams are not good. And I mean, I hear from different people, but some people get bothered because like, if and, and this is what one of the guys I heard because some of those fans still talk to me and they tell me it was like you know what like we would appreciate it if the guys even if they lost they come and talk to us and say thanks for coming out you know yeah and I mean that's the difference and and I was kind of like and I noticed my guys did that too there was times where we they it was like we lost and boom they just did to to the locker room and I was like no dog that's not it yeah that's, that's not it like that's the same not the it, same man. goes owners will go. Coaches will go, players will go, but the fans will always be there. So no, you got to show your love. You got to show your that, respect. And, and that's what happens when it goes to go to Pumas, go to Cruz Azul, go to Chivas, go to Mexico. And people will pull up to your practice want to beat your ass because, like, you're not giving it 110%. It's yeah. like, there's one where they go to this dude from Pumas and they tell him straight up. They were just like, yo, dog, it's okay. He was like, it's okay. He's like, if you want to go out and drink, go eat tacos, it's okay. We see you on the street. He's like but you're only here for what? Like five more months? He was like, just get up your stuff and leave. He was like, us fans, we're always here. I go to every away game and this is how you treat us? And it's like, and the dude is kind of just like, well, it's just, and it's like, what do you say to a fan like that? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you can't. Like, so I think, like I said, I love the fans here, man. I'm just trying to get, we're trying to multiply. We're trying to make sure if it's Mint City, like, anybody, like whoever wants to be a part of it, like for sure. Because honestly, we need all the support. No, that's, these, that's guys, these guys, these guys, these guys are like from away, so they get homesick. So I get homesick too. But when I see these fans, I, I get juiced. Perfect. Yeah. And that's yeah. a that's a message to all these new supporters groups popping up in the Charlotte area. Pull up on a team that's already there. You know what I'm saying? I know, I know yeah. you're waiting for Charlotte FC. Yeah, but it's a team already out there. Pull up on them, yeah. support them, support soccer yeah. in your area. You know, it has to because I mean, sure like, some of these teams, like some of these, like some a lot of these cities in the United States. Hey, yo, like, I look at the Bay Area. We don't need MLS to come save us. We don't. We don't need an MLS team in San Francisco or Oakland. We don't. Like, we got, we got Oakland roots, and we need to get more USL teams or more NISA teams or more around the Bay Area. Like, we don't need those teams, dog. I'm sorry. Like, I, I, I fully believe in lower league soccer. And I love the fact that people have this, finally can have this connection to a team, you know? Mm-hmm. If it's the roots, Stumptown, Detroit City, Chatter, you know? Like, it was like, it was like stuff like that, like, like, who wouldn't want to be a part of something like that? And that's something that gentrifies your banners or doesn't allow you to say no to the Migra in like in the game stands, you know? Like to me, like stuff like that. Like it's look, I mean, imagine like you think but I don't know if Emma does, like they, this, they don't probably accept a lot of banners inside the stadium. Like, why? We're buying, we're buying a ticket and we're we're here to like to support your your like your club that. It's always gonna stay afloat. What's the issue? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's that's muddy waters right there. <sighs> that's why I tell people the political connects. Yeah, yeah and it's it's, it's and it's scary and it and no, it's scary, bro. Like I gotta tell people, MLS and a lot of subs, they're they're scared of lower league soccer, bro. Imagine, remember when NASL teams were in it? They were close to beating MLS teams. Some there's some championship teams they they could be some MLS teams. Like trust, like it's just you know, it's different waters, different ball games, different parts, different. Everything, you know? But, yeah. But I want Yo, I people to question. support those. Go ahead. Yeah. I got a question for y'all. So I've, I've never played soccer. I'm just, I've always just been a fan. Um, But you being the goalkeeper, a Moby, you being the defender, <laughs> what type of conversations are going on between you two during the game? We're just doing whatever we can to not have a goal scored on us. Yeah. So. I, say, I say push up, stack, and run through it. Because I, I play say, like a high, high sweeper keeper. <laughs> I say uh, for the goalie, I say command your box. So anything inside the six, I think the goalie should like make sure that's theirs. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Goalie that's like stuck on their line, I hate that. So like, 
Yeah. You know, so through right, balls. We'll see, so, we'd know? be homies. We'd be homies. Yeah. We'd be a rat. We'd be a rat. And you could pass, tell you like, pass it back to me. I would tell you to pass yeah. it back to me. I tell you to scoot back. Once the forward came, we pass it wide. And you could pass it yeah. to the left, the right side, and then bring it back. You see, I already. Uh, know. I think the, the biggest thing is just like, <laughs> in the, like when it gets into the box, like the goalie just being a no. commanding presence. So like, I shouldn't have to call your name to come get the ball yeah. if it's like within your vicinity. No, yeah. Like, yeah, to me, yeah, it's just, just it. no. Nah, to me, you just gotta stand somebody up, like like with yeah. basketball. Just stand somebody up, don't bite, and I'll make the same for you. Like, oh, I yeah. try, I'll let you see from me. Like, that's, no, that's, yeah, that's true. My man, right, so yeah, leading to this Lord. next question. So, so when the team scores on you, who do you blame? Uh, depends who how they score. Like yeah, for example, yeah. so if he's saying yeah. like stand him up, <laughs> if he's saying if like the guy's on like a one v one and he's saying stand him up, and I stand him up and I give him the angle, like all right, he's gonna shoot near post. And he gets beat near post, then I'm going, I'm on his neck. But okay, if yeah. I if he says force oh, him left, let me say your scenario. Let me say your scenario. Let but hold on, hold on. <laughs> if he says if he says force him left, so because the goalie wants like knows his angle, force him left, force him left, and then he ends up going right and scoring, then that's my fault. So yeah. I'm also the yeah. type of oh, okay. See, if I'm mad at you, this is what I'll probably be mad at. So, for example, if there's a guy on the top of the box, let's say a little bit like in between that half moon, you know, the little edge yeah. of the box. And if you're standing him up and he's kind of hitting the outside with the right foot and you and you lift your you raise your foot and it goes like a little bit through your legs, I'll, I'll be hot. I'll be hot. Yeah. That's the one that's the one I, I kind of get mad at depending on kind of like Joe, just to stay nice and tight. I mean, yeah. that's the only one. I don't yeah, I don't flinch see, from the ball basically. See, yeah, but I don't know. I be getting mad sometimes. Sometimes I don't even know who to be mad at. I be like, damn. <laughs> yeah, like, like we said earlier, goalies are crazy, you know. I just be going through it. No, nah, no, nah, nah. if you guys ever catch one of our games, and I, my team be scoring, but when I every laughs because people have told me, like, when my team scores, if you see me like on the side, I'm just going crazy, like, I'm like this, like, going, yeah, I'm just going dumb on the side. But like I said, I think that man, who's gonna celebrate your goals if you ain't celebrating them? Like, you feel me? Yeah. <laughs> so, facts. That, that's how it gotta be. That's facts. So yeah. we all know MLS All Star Game is you know MLS All Stars versus Liga MX All Stars. Mm-hmm. So who are you rooting for? Uh, Liga MX, but it just depends because you know these guys they're, they're gonna be like, oh, you know what, I need a vacation or I gotta pull my hamstring, so they're gonna need a little break. That's why I'm surprised if they're gonna have it. Some guys are probably gonna ask for a little break, but I'm with Liga MX. I don't know. Conca Champions, you, you, are, you already know how it is. Conca Champions. You got the, <laughs> you got the Cruz Azul shirt. Sure. Hey, bro, if you, if you know about Cruz Azul, bro, they just won a championship and it's been like 18 yeah. years. So I've been, I've been going through it. <laughs> <laughs> so, right, we got a couple of little rapid fire questions as well. So, Let's do it. you being from the Bay Area, who's your top three Bay Area artists? Top three. All right. Yeah. Mr. Fab. Okay, Fabby. Yeah, Too Short. And Mag J. R.I.P. Okay. R.I.P. Mac Dre. Yeah. All right. Top three Bay Area songs. Oh, damn. Top three Bay Area songs. Um, New Oakland. I, I love New Oakland by Mr. Fair. I got the North, got the East, got the West. Yeah, that's the one. <laughs> <laughs> See, I already know. Yo, I need to go and, to Oakland um, function with you then, huh? No, nah, yeah. Yeah, no, no. Yeah, it's been a while since I've been out that way. But um, who else? Damn, what else is the song? Um, by the Jack of R.I.P. He's like, shawty all over me. I don't want to be a shawty all over me. That was the one. That's a classic. R.I.P. to Jack. <laughs> yeah. Um, dang. And I used to love this one um, by uh, by the Hustler. <laughs> it was called Cutting It Up. Okay. It beats paint, cutting up. Roll with the Yanks till they messed it up. <laughs> bro, yeah. Is it, no, yeah, because actually, the, the Hustler, he, he's a huge soccer fan, bro. Like, that guy, be, he, be, yeah, he be everywhere, bro. I've gone to Sunday leagues and I pulled up and I was like, yo, this man's right here. He, he, I remember when I used to <laughs> play our Aguilucho, like my NPSL team. We used to be like, yeah. I remember about y'all. Because we rock to the Stompers and stuff like that. So, yeah, yeah that's, that's, probably, that's definitely one of my favorite songs for me. That's dope. So, what's on your pre match playlist? My pre match playlist. Um, <laughs> Actually, uh, right here. Well, top three, or just you telling me which ones? Because just, one you, you uh, just name, name a few. I know it's probably long. No, I got um, eight out of ten by Drake. Um, uh, what else? Um, actually, I've been slapping a lot. My life by J Cole. That's probably the one I've been on. Okay, um, yeah, that's the one. And, and you in the state? Yeah. Okay. So you know, yeah, no, yeah, they, they love that man. Out here. Um, and probably one more. Uh. One more, uh, oh, devastated by Joey Badass. 
Okay. I used to be so devastated. <sighs> yeah, so yeah, all those songs, yeah. The fire will probably right. come out. All right, Doug, last one. Um, what's been your biggest adjustment moving from Cali to North Carolina? Like, like what do you like? What don't you like? like what do I like and what I do like? Oh, what I don't like is I hate when I see the Confederate flags out here. Mm, yeah. I hate I, I kind of, I mean... That's crazy. I used to, yeah, the fam. <laughs> yeah, fam. So when I pulled up and I was driving when I went to go get some food and I'm driving in and I saw this nice lawn. I was like, yo, that's a nice lawn grass. Oh, boom, I started seeing the pool. I look up. I was like, yo, <laughs> it's wild. <laughs> uh, probably that. Um, honestly, and sometimes the drivers here, it's a little different because, you know, like the uh, truck drivers, the big ones, the huge ones, bro, they're being the fast lane. <laughs> yeah. They be in the fast lane out here. Uh, bro, out there in Cali, I was like, yo, a CHP would have pulled this back or <laughs> revoked everything. Yeah. But yeah, that's probably those are the two things. Um, what I like the most about here, obviously, I told you guys about the pork. Because I had yeah. short ribs out here. Like, I barbecued a couple of times. It's real out here. Um, and uh, a grass. They have a lot of grass out here. Like, just the fact that, like, you play soccer and it's just there, like, just <laughs> chill. Like, bro, mm -hmm. it's crazy. And um, what else? What else? Is that? And honestly, yeah, I, I, it goes back <laughs> I'm to so like, glad, I'm so glad you explained that because I was like, what you mean? That oh, yeah. And people would have been like, well, what's up? I'm at Wild. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, hold up. No, hold yeah, up. Yeah. no cause, no, like, but... I tell, and especially, it's funny because I tell people out there and people be like, what are you talking about? Like, you guys don't have no like, grass soccer fields? And I'd be like, no, it's turf. What are you talking yeah. about? It's like, by like the end of the year, it's like rug. Like, yeah. The Sunday leagues take their time on that. But um, that and, uh, I actually like the fact that it rains and it stops. Like, oh, rain, crazy thunder, and like the next day it'll be nice and sunny, nice and warm. So, uh -huh. so, so yeah. I always say the weather's a little different, but no, I enjoy it. And oh, actually, southern, southern hospitality is a thing too. Oh, people yeah. Hell, sure. People are nice different out here. Out here. Yeah. Yo, people are yeah. hella nice out here. Yo. Yeah, I live in the Atlanta area, so I definitely feel. Yeah, they, they, you know, people are hella nice when it comes to breakfast. Like, like, you want extra <laughs> country potatoes? I'm like, yeah, for sure. <laughs> yo, yo, people are really nice. Uh, yeah. That's the cool part about here. Have you experienced that rain where it's sunny, but it's raining though at the same uh, time? Yeah, we're in the same day. Yeah, I've actually, I've, there was one day we were at practice, bro, and it just started pouring like, just crazy like we were like where your clothes is like heavy you know where you just and we were just chilling in the rain and then like five minutes later the sun came out and just started going crazy bro like and like where our clothes all our stuff dried up and i was like there's no <laughs> way i was like there's no way bro <laughs> but in that time i was like think like i remember i was in goal and we were kicking the ball and i just went dang and then i was thinking Yo, I really came to North Carolina, bro. <laughs> I really came out here. Because like, sometimes I, I do that at practice. I'll be chilling. I'll be like, obviously, I don't wake up. And it's not it's not Roots practice. Or it's not me waking up in California. Or whatever. And I'll wake up here and I'll be like, yo, it's, it's really on the other I'm side. I'm out here. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, that's one thing. All right, for sure. All right, so let's jump into one of our favorite segments of the show. It's no card, yellow card, red card. So this is a rapid fire segment of the show where I'll read off some news topics. It could be yeah. pop culture, it could be soccer related, it could be whatever. But we'll give our opinion on those topics using the soccer card system. So no okay. card is, you know, I agree with it, I'm cool with it. Yellow card is I can go either way. And red card is obviously I disagree or I'm not cool with it. And then kind of give like a little explanation of like why you gave it that card. All right, All right cool. Let's do it. So we got three today. Um, first one, we're going to jump right in. No, Messi signs with PSG. What card are we giving him to sign with PSG? Dang, no card. Nah, yeah, I can't give him a car. If anyone gets a car, it's Barca. They get that red card. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, nah, yeah. Nah, yeah Barca, no, Barca gets a whole lot of trouble. They got a lot of stuff on. But yeah, no car for my man Messi. I mean, I think, uh, obviously, I wanted him to go to Man City, to be honest. Um, I wanted him. And then I wanted Ronaldo to go to Man U. But to be honest, um, I think... I think uh, I think the fact that like he's getting different areas, I think that's cool. You know, I think that's probably like, I mean, Barca, he, he's done a lot for Barca. And the thing is that uh, from what I'm reading, they just didn't manage money right, you know? They didn't manage mm -hmm. personality and personnel the way, you know? So I feel like, it's like I think yeah. they, my man needed that. But I, like I said, I wish I would've seen him in the EPL. They still own 36 mil too. I didn't even know that. See, you see, but like, <laughs> like a man like that, yo, he sells jersey like crazy. Like, which, which, what is he doing with that money? See, but 
Yo. Red card for those fools, but go on. <laughs> All right. Next up. Sergio Aguero wants to leave Barca two months after signing with the team. That's he allegedly that. asked his agent to get him out of his contract. So what card that's are we giving Sergio for this? That's, this that's a red that's a red and you get a two for Like to me, I don't see bro. Like I, I think about I've spoken to guys about this and uh I think about it like a uh, Sunday league or a uh, pick up basketball or whatever. Like there'll be guys and say Oh, you know what? This player ain't registered, or this guy ain't even on your team. Hey, bro, it don't matter. It's my eleven guys against your eleven guys. What's up? Like, <laughs> simple as that. Mm-hmm. Like, like you really think it, this is like being a kid and saying, "Oh yeah, I'm not playing because my best friend's not playing." Like, nah, man, you're a grown man. Like, are you really a grown man? Like, handle it. Like, <laughs> so I mean, at the end of the day, that's that's it's his commitment, you know. Yeah, yeah, I'll give him a yellow card, but I mean, at the same time, like like you said, like he should have known, like, or he could have waited till like it was guaranteed. Like, all right, Messi, you coming back? That's, yeah. that's the only way, way I'm playing. Or yeah. if he knew that, you just like put a stipulation in your contract where it's like, yeah, I'm only here contingent on if this stuff works out. So, no, yeah, yeah. Um, but at the same time, like, yo, you signed the contract, so. I'm just, contract, yeah. I'm just a firm believer in contracts. Yeah, I'm just a firm believer in contracts because, like I said, Messi probably you know, like Messi didn't grab his hand to sign this contract, but Messi definitely hold his hand to the office. You know, like <laughs> he told them, "Yo, man, we sitting down, we doing this." So I mean, by the end, they like we said, yeah. we grown men. You know, imagine if but, I said, "Oh, yeah. Yeah, my best friend is playing." Damn, like. I know it's messy. But at, the, it's at the end of the day, it's, it's your career. So, like, if you're not happy somewhere, do what you got to do to get out the situation. So that's why I'm giving them the yellow card. Mm-hmm. Oh, I feel it. No, yeah, I mean, I respect that too. All right, last one. Um, goalkeeper David Ochoa chooses to play for Mexico over the U.S. I think he was in the U.S. system for like a hot second. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so chose to switch over to um, to Mexico. So what card are we giving him? All right, you know what you're going to say. <laughs> Look, awesome. What you going to say? I was like, hold on. All right, let's see. I was just going to okay. say, no card, bro. You know. No, nah, like, I like, right. I'll tell you, this is the thing with me. I think it's, uh, it's probably like a, like, I mean, my man just said it too. It's his decision. I mean, I'll give it like a yellow card just because of the fact that I was like, um, you went into camp with them, you know? Like you went into camp with the no. U.S., all that. You kind of set like a, like a place for you. I think we have to understand the scenario is like, oh no, like after watching that Gold Cup, obviously he made a decision based on what my man did. Like Tim was getting down. My man was putting in work. So it's like, now you got to realize and every goalie does this. Like, I don't care who you are, like, you think about the depth chart or you think about who the guy so every player about does Zach, that. Zach and Brad you got a bunch of guys so and honestly like you see Mexico Mexico is going to go through a generation right now where the whole goalkeeper system is going to switch like they're going to remember what Charles probably playing maybe maybe if he, he's still fit he probably got one more World Cup in him and after that they're going to need a guy for long term because Mexico don't switch goalies like that so I think it's a yellow card I mean but my man probably could have handled it better yeah, for me, I'm saying no card. I think uh, for context, I definitely think you all should read the Players Tribune article that he came out with. You know, it was a great story about his like upbringing, uh, the battle between homeland versus motherland, you know, some mental health stuff, and then like ultimately making his decision. So when it, when it comes to the, you know, the dual internationals or the dual nationals, I think that's like when it comes down to like, like you said, all right, homeland versus motherland, like who you feel most connected to. And then secondly, uh, like, yo, am I going to have a, like a role on the squad? Because do I play for a U.S. and like get like, all right, yeah. 10 caps? Or do I go to Mexico and like possibly make a World Cup? Yeah, so yeah. You got to make that decision like no, yeah, 10 yeah. times out of 10. So for me, no card. I think he did what's best for him and his family. Uh-huh. And um, <laughs> yeah. And what's I, funny is that he actually started with the youth Mexican national team. And okay, he went um, to U.S. and then national team with the yeah. U.S. and they switched it back over. So. Yeah, the only thing I was like, cause I, I think, is that the article that just came out today, right? The one that he had yeah. was popular? Okay, yeah, I was going to read that one actually today too. Um, you know, the only thing is that it sucks because like he was getting a lot of hate for it, like for the whole like, you know, where people were like commenting and all that stuff on him. So it was just, you know, bro, like if people are like bad mouthing you or crazy stuff like that, just, you know, put it to the side, you know, because I think that's, especially during the time he did it, like, Mexico and U.S. They're hitting right now. They're going crazy. Yeah. I mean, everybody saw the rankings. That's probably, like, probably the best rivalry is going to be. No, this, this is probably that's the best rivalry is going to be in a while. Because no, because all these guys like everybody from Europe, Tata and all them, Greg, they were said, "Oh yeah, we got to bring the guns out." Like <laughs> these, everybody's going now, and it doesn't matter if it's a third team, second team. Like this, it's, there's the guys on the third team that can play on the first team. Like it doesn't matter. <laughs> 
Yeah. Yes, sir. You were saying Mexico stack. Oh. Straight up. Yeah. Yep. Well, that's that's it for this week of uh, no card, yellow card, red card. What, what you got? Yeah, yeah. Now, uh, first and foremost, yo, Kevin, thank you so much for taking time to join us on the uh, on the show. I know we we tried to make it happen before, but this was the perfect time for it. Um, for people that are trying to connect with you, support you, you know, catch up with what you got going on. How can they do that? Yeah. You know, so, um, if you guys want to support me, anything, um, it's, uh, my IG is at, my IG, my Twitter is at, at Kevrum. So it's a K E V B R U H H. Um, you can get me on Twitter, IG, send me a DM, anything. I'm actually pretty open to talking to anybody, man. Just talk, talk, talk to them about soccer. He's like, um, yeah, just follow that and actually follow Stumptown too. Stumptown AC needs some followers, man. We need you know, a little bit more support. We're a great group of people, man. Like, um, we got a real coach that really knows about like uh, about getting to the players, you know. So I feel like we have a lot of good places um, that this team could reach. It's, you know, we just need a little support. And if like you guys want to follow me on my way to whatever I do, playing here, maybe hopefully be a coach one day, commissioner, whatever, like players' association. Yeah, follow me through. Nah, that's love, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. No, appreciate good, you man. guys. No, appreciate you guys for real too. I like, um. Honestly, yeah, I love stuff, like, especially connecting people from Cali. Like I said, like who's going, who's going to represent the Bay Area, represent what we do or what we have if, if we don't do it on our own, you know? So, um, no, I appreciate exactly. you guys for sure. No, most definitely. Yeah. So we're going to have all that information in the show notes. Make sure you guys follow Stumptown. Make sure you guys follow Kevin. Uh, just some good things going on with that. Um, but that's our show for this week. Subscribe, rate, and review. It helps us get discovered. Follow us on the socials at Two Cents FC. Check out our merch at twocentsports.shop. If you enjoy the show, consider dropping a donation using the link in the description. It helps support the costs associated with the show. It helps us continue to get wonderful guests on the show. And then tweet us your comments on the show or any topics you want me or Elder to discuss. No holds bar. We talk about anything and everything. The only show where you get unfiltered thoughts and opinions. Facts. Two cents. Let's get it. <laughs> yep. Till next week. Yeah. Peace out. Till next week. <laughs>